اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ان كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قل اطيع الله والرسول فان الله لا يحب الكافرين بارك الله لنا ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جواد كريم ملك برؤوف رحيم the jews of medina used to claim that we are lovers of Allah. We love Allah. And the Quran poses them a very simple challenge. Prove, prove that you are lovers of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Quran gives a very simple litmus test, a very simple one. Follow Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. Just follow the way of Muhammad, that will be a clear proof that you are lovers of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But before we read this, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ The verse before that is, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا On that day, every person will find in front of him whatever good he has done. وَمَا عَمِلَتْ سُوء And every evil that he has done. And what else will happen then? تَوَضُّ أَنَّ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا يَوَضُّ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا He would love that there would be a huge distance between him and his evil deeds on that day. وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ النَّفْسَ And Allah warns you, Allah cautions you about your unmindfulness and therefore getting the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Allah is very kind to his servants. Now that is really as though, you know, the Quran is saying, Let, let's take you to the final destination and you know the and that is what every sane person is always wanting you're really not interested in the architect the builder the building merch builders merchant and the stuff that is used and the techniques that they use to build your house what are you interested in i want to see a, a beautiful good house and eh? the end result you're actually interested in the end result you know this is one of the beauties of the quran it really makes us that's why it's so powerful it's constantly on every page almost it's telling you you know do you know where you're going do you know your place and where you are heading because it's so easy to forget that isn't it because of the immediacy of the world and the remoteness and the distance of the hereafter, we narrow-minded, bigoted, small-minded people, foolish people, get absorbed in the world. No, we, we are immersed in it. We're immersed to such an extent that actually we begin to sink in it. And we keep sinking, sinking, like, like in the quicksand. You sink, you sink, until you drown and you die. And we really, and, and so here Allah says, you know, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ النَّفْسَ You know, Allah warns you, cautions you about your own nafs becoming disobedient. You know, so how do you translate that? وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ النَّفْسَ Therefore, Allah warns you of His wrath because you will be the slave of your ego that will take you to hell. Therefore, be aware of the wrath of Allah. Yet, Allah is very kind to His servants. But then follows the most important part. If you claim to love Allah, 
There's a very simple test. فَطَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. Follow me and then Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. Okay? And Allah is the forgiver, the kind. And then again, قُلْ أَطِيُّ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ You know, again Allah says, Obey Allah and His Messenger. And if then they turn away, remember that Allah does not love those who are ungrateful to Him. So, you know, there's a lot that is lost when you just read like this. But if you read very carefully, it's really interesting. Allah says, قُلْ أَطِيُّ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ Obey Allah and His Messenger. That's the imperative. That is a command. And then the Quran shifts to فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ Do this. That is the second person. And then the Quran shifts to the third person. If they turn away, then tell them Allah doesn't like those who reject. But what is this point? You do this and then Alright. You're turning away from those that are in front of you. This is called iltifat, a very you know, one of the styles of the Quran. In English we don't do this a lot. You know, in English you would say, um, uh, obey Allah and his Rasul, and if you turn away, in English that's you know, good English, you know, they, they would say, No, we don't do that. You say, if you turn away. But the Qur'an always does this, is called iltifat. It, because the Qur'an was revealed orally, it wasn't, it wasn't a book that you know, Jibreel sat down and wrote and gave to the Prophet. No, it wasn't like that. It was actually oral. And do this. Well, if you don't, then Allah is saying, if you, if you don't, then if they don't, then this, as you know, this actually is a very em emphatic, very powerful way of emphasizing. But anyway, that's a it's, it's a constant theme in the Quran, and it poses a real challenge for translation and for readers of translation. And this is why you know it's important to understand the, the, the sort of niceties you know of, of Quran and its language, its rhetoric, as it is called. So, you know, we need to love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We we love Allah. But the proof of that, Allah says, how, how, how do you prove it? Very simple. Obey Muhammad Rasulullah. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah. Sunnah means the practice, a good practice. You know, Allah talks about sunnah Allah. Good practices of Allah. Allah has good practices, which we would call really the divine laws. Okay? Those divine laws that were discovered by Newton and Kepler and several other great scientists and we keep on discovering these sunnat Allah, you know, these sunan Allah, these sunnas, good practices of Allah. So Allah says, you know, this is the, the, the your love for me will come through your following Muhammad Rasulullah. And we'll talk about why follow the sunnah of Rasulullah, the good practices, why? Well, first let's look at how did the companions, the Sahaba do this? You know, the Sahaba were completely devoted and dedicated to the Prophet. To the extent that the outsider would say, you know, these are crazy people. And this is exactly what Urwa ibn Mas'ud Sakfi did when he saw the, the Sahaba. When Rasulullah did wuzu, they would put their hands underneath so the water wouldn't fall down. Fall down. They would catch it in their hands, okay? And they would wipe it, okay? This love and this closeness made people, you know, oh, how is this? What is this? What sort of people are these? And when we read the Sahaba, the companion's life, we really see this devotion and this huge love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they were doing the ittaba' al-Rasul. They were really following the messenger, okay? So there lies many beautiful lessons for us. For example, you know, once um, we, um, we have this example of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, a young man, and he comes to the Prophet sallallahu wearing a red cloak, a bright red cloak, okay? And the Prophet sallallahu looks at him with disdain and frowns at, frowns at him as though disapproving it. He didn't say anything. 
Abdullah ibn Umar got it. He went back immediately and left it home and then came without it. Okay? And, you know, this is, in, in, in another version it actually says that he burnt that red cloak of his. Okay? Just to, as though he knew the Prophet ﷺ disapproving of it. And the Prophet didn't have to say anything. The mere gesture is enough. This was the extent of the obedience, okay? This was the ittaba. Similarly, Hazrat Abdullah, uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the second Khalifa, he's doing the tawaf of Kaaba. And then he comes near the Hajri Aswad. After each tawaf, he comes to the Hajri Aswad to do the, uh, the, the, the kissing, the bosa. Eh? And he stands there and says, as though he's talking to the black stone, he says, you know, had I not seen my beloved Rasul kissing you, I would ignore you. <laughs> I wouldn't do it either. After all, you're a stone. What are you? But because Muhammad Rasulullah's lips touched you, I will do the same. In other words, I don't understand the logic of it, but so what? But it is the practice of my beloved, therefore I will do it. And here lies the real secret of it, really. It's not because it makes sense, all right? It's not because I cannot reason it, no, or logical, no. Because my beloved did it, and I love Muhammad Rasulullah. He's my master, he's my guide, and he is my Shafi. He's the one who's going to intercede for me. He's the one who's my guarantor. He's going to guarantee me the entrance of paradise. Therefore, I've got nothing to lose but to follow his way. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu actually tells us why you need to follow me. And this is a hadith in which he says, he likens himself to the rain. He says the rain falls. We're having a lot of rain now. Haven't we? We've had it for the last three or four months. And it's going on and on. And this rain, he says, I'm like the rain, but the rain falls on all sorts of land. It falls on a fertile piece of land. And what does it do to that? From that fertile land, you will get wonderful crop. You'll get a great harvest. You'll get flowers. You'll get fruits. You'll get all kinds of grains and cereals. Okay? You will benefit. Others will benefit. And then he says, the same rain falls on some rocky land. Here, what happens? It just collects in a poodle. It becomes a pool of water. And what happens? The land doesn't benefit, but the people or the animals will drink from it. They will, others will benefit from it. And then he says, some rain will fall on barren land, on a salty land, absolutely useless. Doesn't bring out anything. No one can drink from it. Nothing can grow on it. Do you understand that? Now you tell me, Atik Sahib. Which, which are you? Huh? The fertile land. Are you the fertile land, eh? Yes, just think about. You know, he says, that is the relationship between me and my sunnahs. You know, if you want to, which land are you? I'm giving you these beautiful teachings. Which one are you? Are you fertile land? Who's going to benefit and give benefits to? Or are you going to be that rocky land that just collects and collects all this knowledge, all these beautiful teachings of Muhammad Rasulullah and then just keeps them to himself, not benefiting? Or oh, sorry, letting others just benefit but not benefiting himself? Or are you going to be that useless barren land, the salty peat where no one benefits? Which one are you? Very pertinent question for all of us to reflect on. Where do we belong? Which one do we want to be? Are we those fertile ones or those infertile ones? And then, in another hadith, he likens himself to a fire. He, he says somebody lights a fire. So what happens when you light a fire on a dark night? A bonfire outside, what happens? You get moths, you get flies coming to the fire and they get burnt. And he says, then there is one who is fanning those flies away. 
propels them away, pushes them away. He says, that's what I'm doing. You know, there's the fire of hell. You, like those moths, are just rushing headlong into the fire of hell. And there I am trying to rescue you. Eh? And I, then he uses the word, I hold you from your waist. I hold you from the waist so, so that you don't fall into it. You know, this is Shafa Hufratim Minanar Fa'an Qazakum Minha, the Quran says. You were standing on the abyss, on the edge of hellfire, about to fall into it, and Muhammad Rasulullah rescued you. So here lies, you know, the benefit of following the Sunnah. Although, you know, the, the, the Quran says, and Allah says, the biggest benefit is that Allah will love you. And there can't be a bigger and a greater result that you would want. So let us, inshallah, from today, you know, make this very important commitment and promise that every sunnah that I hear of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I will try to practice it. I will follow it. I will understand it. And I will then begin to see its benefits. But the sunnahs of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa are very difficult to practice. They're challenging, you know, because nafsa. The Quran already said, you know, you've got to be careful that you don't follow your own ego. You know, we have become the servants of our ego and our own desires, our own nafs. We can't give that up. Allah says, no, I want you to follow the nafs of Muhammad Not your own, you know. This is yuhazzirukumullah. The other translation of this would be وَيُحَزِّرُكُمُ nafsa. Allah warns you against your own ego. Instead, take the ego of Muhammad sallallahu because that is the perfect man. That is the al-insanul kamil. If you were to follow him and his ways, you are going to be successful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be those who follow in the footsteps of our beloved Rasul, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillah.